Today we're going to talk about power shotting and everything you could possibly want to know from A to Z. Hi there, I'm Steve Rogers. Welcome to the Bass Fishing Life. Well, today we are going to be talking about power shotting, everything you could possibly want to know from what it is to weights, hookups, presentations, all of that. So what is power shotting? We all know drop shotting. It's been around, came over from Japan quite a few years ago now, and many, many bass anglers drop shot and have that as a part of their arsenal. Well, power shotting is basically scaling up so you can fish faster and cover water. Traditional drop shotting is slow and it's methodical and you hit very specific areas on a lake. A power shot, you can move right along and use it more as a search bait to locate fish. And that's why I wanna go over all the intricate details about power shotting today. If you want to know four great tips for all drop shotting, I've got a video at the end I'm going to link to, so make sure that you stay tuned for that one. So first off, the big difference is the weight. Here is a traditional drop shot weight. This one is small. It's a little eighth of an ounce. When we're talking about power shotting, we're talking about going with weights that are at least a half ounce, even up to one ounce in some cases. So right there is a huge, huge difference, and it allows you to fish a drop shot rig so much differently. So this one here is just a regular round drop shot weight. I spend a lot of time using a bell weight. I really like this one a whole bunch. And then we're also gonna be talking about cylinder weights as well, but this is a half ounce cylinder weight, and this is a regular half ounce round weight. Well, what are the situations where you may want one as opposed to the other? Just real generally, if you've got a pretty clean bottom surface or you've got a very rocky type of a situation, these round weights or the traditional bell weights work really good because you get much more bottom contact with the weight. There's more surface area hitting the bottom of the lake or river, and you can feel things a whole lot better with either the round or the bell sinker. Now, the cylinder weight is designed specifically to come through lots of vegetation or cover really, really well. And you can see in the footage here that this weight just slides right through weeds without getting hung up as much as a traditional bell or round drop shot weight. So that is the big difference between the cylinder and the round. So depending on the lake or river you're fishing, you can go ahead and swap out the weights um, or you could just go with that traditional bell sinker. I've had great luck with that one and used it for many, many years specifically. Now you may be wondering why would we want to fish faster? And I've got one hooked up here on a spinning rod ready to go with the cylinder weight. Why would I want to put these heavier weights to fish faster? Well, there's a couple reasons. There's times when we're coming from that post-spawn and into summer fishing, the drop shot just works. It works and it works. So a lot of anglers like to put that drop shot on there. But there are many times when those fish kind of reposition themselves in the summer, or if you're fishing on a lake or river that's new to you, and you're not sure where those community spots are, where those big summer schools are going to go ahead and come and hang out for June, July, August, and into September. So with the heavier weight, you can flip it out there and it's going to boom, drop quick, get right to the bottom, let it sit there, shake it a time or two, reel it in, and then go ahead and quickly move on down the shore. So you can cover a ton of water with a power shot, uh, especially if you've got some real heavy current, if it's a real windy day, you can just scoot right along because there's times when that drop shot by far and away outfishes anything else that you could possibly be doing. The other reason that you may want this heavier weight, and I specifically had this situation on a, a bass open event on Lake Champlain, 
is when you, when you put that heavier weight on there, that drop shot lure, whatever you have, just really rockets to the bottom quickly. And I was focused on smallmouth on Lake Champlain. And if I had to guess, I would probably say about 30 to 40% of the smallmouth that I was catching hit on that drop. They never let the bait get to the bottom because it was shooting by them so fast and I was power shotting then I had a big three odd hook a five inch uh, watermelon like a, a fluke a swim bait on there and I was fishing with a real heavy weight and those smallmouth would just nail that thing way before the weight ever got to the bottom so the weight lets you fish quicker cover water quicker and it can also draw reaction strikes when they see it just shoot by them really, really quickly and they just nose down and investigate it immediately. So those are the big pluses to power shotting and using that heavier weight. Now, as far as the presentation goes, as I talked about just a minute ago, just flip it out there, let it sink, twitch, twitch, reel it in. Flip it out, let it sink, twitch, twitch, reel it in. You want to move quickly till you locate where they are at. This isn't the traditional drop shot presentation where you're just gonna sit there and let it soak for a while. You're looking for fish, you're using the drop shot as a search bait. This also works well when you mark some on your graph and you see them down there 25, 30, 35, 40 foot of water and you can just go ahead and flip that bale and man you can get down there really really quick in that deeper water. So a power shot method works super well when you're fishing straight vertically under the boat when you're marking fish on your graph but make sure that it, it's a quick presentation, not the lure. You're not, the lure is not being scooted along the bottom quickly. It's getting into position quickly, which is what allows you to cover lots of water. So that's the big, big difference. The lure is not scooting right along across, horizontally across in the water column. You're just getting it into position in front of the fish quickly to locate them. One thing that I am asked all the time when I have worked seminars, email, comments, and YouTube videos is, is people always ask about leader length. And if you ask 100 anglers about leader length, what do they recommend? What do they do? You may get 75, 80 different answer so i'll go ahead and give you my opinion on leader length there's two ways that you can look at this one what type of bottom do you have if you have vegetation that is 12 inches 18 inches there off of the bottom well you might want to have a longer leader so you can get a Above that. So that's the first thing I'm going to be thinking about is what type of bottom composition do you have? Do you have to get the bait up above the vegetation that is down there? But if you've got a clean lake bottom, a clean river bottom, what I would recommend you think about is when you have a longer leader, it puts more action on the lure. So if your leader is this long, okay, you know, 18 inches, two feet long, is when you move the rod, when you jiggle it just a bit or you twitch it, that lure is gonna have way, way more action to it. If you have a shorter leader, it's not going to have as much action. So depending on the mood of the fish or maybe water temperature, um, in your summer months when things are warmer, their metabolisms are, are moving quicker, maybe you want that longer leader. Uh, in the winter time when we know often when they just get belly down right there on, on the lake bed, right in that mud, you maybe want a little bit shorter leader. But just think about it as far as lure action long leaders, more action, short leaders, less action. So that's just my real quick rule of thumb as far as leader length. But like I said at the beginning of this, it, the first thing I look at is the, the bottom composition. If I've got to get that bait higher than whatever cover is down there, that will determine what type of leader length as well. Now lure choices. Boy, there are just hundreds of different lures that you can put on a drop shot. And traditionally, we use things that are smaller, um, like we have this half shell here or this dream shot. These are very typical drop shot baits. They look awesome in the water. They catch a ton of fish. But as I mentioned, when I was on Lake Champlain, I was using a five inch swim bait. 
and this was working really well. So a drop shot does not always have to be this, this ultra finesse, really small lure. Remember the whole key of the drop shot is to get that lure up off the bottom and make it with a really, really natural presentation. So depending on the hook and depending how you hook up the lure and the type of plastic you use is gonna make a big difference in your presentation. If you are using a really, really large bait, okay, like a five inch, something made out of the Elastec, like your Z2s, this is much more buoyant. It's gonna sit there and hold itself in this nice horizontal position and maybe even up a little bit. If you've got a larger swim bait that is out of traditional plastic, it is going to dip down on you a little bit if you just hold it motionless. One way to keep a larger plastic up is to go ahead and use a larger hook and Texas rig it as opposed to nose hook it. So if you've got a Texas rig, that's going to help it stay up in the water column a little bit better as opposed to if you had something, a traditional, like here's a traditional drop shot hook and you would go ahead and just nose hook a lure. So depending on the mood of the fish, how quickly they're hitting, if you've got to let it sit there and soak for a second, really check out those baits under water. How do they look? Are they holding themselves in position? Do they have the action that you want? Try rigging it nose to hook. Try rigging it a uh, Texas rig where you just expose it and leave that hook lay out on the back of the bait. Try your Elastec plastics. Try your traditional plastics. All of those are going to make a big difference on how that lure presents. Now if the bass are real aggressive and they're hitting well, it's not as big a deal. But if they're more finicky and they want it presented a certain way, maybe your partner in the back of the boat is getting some bites and you're not, how is the rigging going? How does it look differently? So keep tweaking your rigging methods until you get it presenting exactly the way that you want it. Now that leads me into lure color. Oftentimes with the drop shot, the fish get a good look at it, right? Because it's, it's not falling all the way to the bottom and maybe getting buried up in some sand grass or wedging down between a rock. It's up off the bottom and the bass can come right up to it and get an excellent look at the bait. It has to look natural to them. So if you're on a, a lake that has zero shad, no thread fin, no gizzard shad, no alewives, you don't really want to throw your whites and your silvers and your grays. I mean, they're still going to catch fish, but if you match the bait fish that are in there, maybe it's your bluegills or yellow perch, you're probably going to have better luck. Now, as far as once you know what your bait fish are, and let's say I'm trying to target a bluegill type of a pattern. So I might be going between a green pumpkin or a watermelon. One is more translucent than the other. So keep moving colors around, keep switching colors until you get a more solid bite. You, you want them to commit to it and take. And a lot of times just tweaking the color can make all the difference. So be sure to play with that and vary that up and dial it in exactly. If you wanna check out another video that has four excellent tips for drop shotting, make sure that you go ahead and check this one out right here. I think you'll find it very helpful. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.